Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. FF Episode 1209. Hi, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here on the 1209 FF Episode here in Podcastro Valley Mont at the Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth. I think I just about covered it. Today we hear from Benita, the Mike's Daily Podcast, the scruntle fiddle player, and the brewmaster. You can remove your mask now. Mike's Daily Podcast. But don't we seem to always wear a mask in life? When people see us, they see us. It's like a knife going through us. Through our souls, it's true I'm getting metaphysical And that's something I didn't mean to do This early on in today's podcast Mike's Daily Podcast That's the name of it I'm a little loopy, I've had a little bit of pizza Because there is a Mike's plethora Daily A pizza a Podcast From a Yeah Company lunch Company lunch. The boss said, buy a bunch of pizza. And so there's a bunch of leftover. And I had a little for breakfast. Woo, that's not good. It's not healthy. I strongly advise against it. But And then there, were, there was Halloween last night, of course. Wow. Wow, shuts wow. That was fun. What I ended up doing to work off some of the pizza from the pizza lunch was I walked my dog... All over Podcastro Valley. I saw everything from the Castro Village does a thing with kids where they, they uh, all the shops, you know, the shop owners sit out front with a bunch of candy and hand it out to the kids. I went there with my dog and saw all the people in the cool costumes that they were wearing, and it was cool. And stopped by the Pet Food Express where they give my dog a treat. And then I went back. Towards my house And I did not realize There's a street called Sandy Lane That is just packed full of people Doing interesting stuff on their front lawns You know, zombie apocalypses And uh, there's uh, Oh, there was someone had a VW van With a skeleton in it And there was like a strub going off And there was one like a crypt I think, oh yeah, I had a picture of that A podcast picture of that earlier Oh look, who just walked in been here to the rodeo queen. Hi, hello. Answer this girl, a fiddle player, tell you what. What? Yesterday, y'all said Dia de las Muertas. It's actually Dia de los Muertos there. Wow. I didn't know you spoke any Spanish, this girl, fiddle player. I do. I also say that. Listen to my Spanish here right now. All right, I can't wait. Picante sauce. Don't think that's, um... But nice try. Speaking of, well, tequila. Tequila. There was this group of people. So, Podcastro Valley has these streets. And you'll see like a tiny street. And it ends up connecting to 10 houses all over Podcastro Valley because there's all this land. It was just divided up weird. There was a lot of chicken farms in Podcastro Valley back in the day. And there is this one neighborhood. Oh, look who else just walked in. And these people, because nobody was walking up their street to, you know, give out candy to, to take candy from them to trick or treat, the people came out of their house and went right to the edge of where that street meets a busier street. And I'm walking by with Basil the Boxer, and they said, Hey, do you want some tequila? It's it's what we give to the adults. Of course, we give candy to the kids. Ah, candy. So I had a little shot of tequila. It was nice. Tequila in Podcastro Valley. What a what a fun evening. Oh, somebody else walked in. Hi, Mike. I'm Mike the Root Beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Have some of my delicious tequila. Oh, Root Beer. Oh, boy. Oh. I don't want to do that right now. Because I'm already coming over a coma from the pizza that I had. And I don't think I'll be able to proceed with the rest of this podcast. Just drink it! All right. Mmm. Oh. Wow. And what's cool is the alcohol in there kills all the bacteria you usually put in your root beer. 
I know. Well, that was my Halloween. It was a lot of fun, and I hope you had fun with yours. I was so glad, though, that my street was really quiet. Uh, one of my neighbors, Carol, who sometimes listens to the show, she was saying, hey, nobody came down the street. It, it was uh, completely empty. So I went home, took a shower, because I wake up at 4 in the morning. I don't take showers in the morning. I, I take them at night. So I took it and, and then went to bed. It was perfect. Nobody rang the doorbell after 9 o'clock. That did happen to Marco, who sometimes does the Marco Minute. The Marco Minute. The Marco Minute. He also gets up super, super early. So he's trying to get to sleep like at nine. And somebody rang his doorbell and said trick or treat. At nine o'clock. No. No. That is wrong, parents. Oh, and and these were kids with parents. Kids with like a four-year-old, and they were trick-or-treating at nine o'clock at night. No. Bad. Bad etiquette. You're 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 abusing the Halloween etiquette. And that and I thought about that when he told me that story, and I thought, man, that has happened to me before. Not only here in California, but in Alabama that happened one year. I ended up giving the kids all my candy because I was like, nobody showed up all night. And here's today's podcast picture. So, you win. Oh, you know what I did? I started a bad precedent there. That was several years ago, and now it's come back around. But I want to stop it right now with my silly podcast. Kids, parents, don't go trick-or-treating after nine. We got to go to bed and wake up at four. The podcast picture, speaking of Alabama, was at Orange Beach, Alabama. It's that little sliver of Alabama that touches a huge water mass called the Gulf. And that is a picture of Orange Beach. I went there. Actually, that was taken around Christmas time, 2007. That long ago, almost 10 years. So thank you, Digital Film, for holding up. Digital... uh, Digital pictures are awesome. And now people have had, you know, they got digital pictures that go back over 10 years. And you've got all this, these clear shots. You don't have film that's fading. It's wonderful, isn't it? This digital world we live in. I hope you like it because that's the world we live in. Full of emails being, being found by Julian Assange and the Russians and being dumped on the press and the media. Oh, and the conservative media, very upset that all of a sudden the media is focusing their attention on why did James Comey decide to do this now, just before the election? He doesn't want Hillary to win, does he? He's he's in Trump's pocket, isn't he? Well, whatever. That's what they'll talk about on conservative radio. But you know what I'm going to talk about really quickly is mikesdailypodcast.com and where you can catch all the past podcast pictures and hear past interviews that I've done. And there's also a link to the Amazon. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, and Amazon's doing, I think, their Black Friday. They've extended it to the beginning of November. And here we are in November. Once again, real quick. I have a birthday in November, and I'm not looking forward to it. And I thought about the number this year, and I'm like, geez, I'm just a few years away from the big, big one. What the heck? So that all made me depressed, as it will tend to do. But And then all the bills that happen in November. So many bills come due in November. It's crazy. But I hope you have a great... There is Thanksgiving and turkeys and... uh, Happiness, seeing relatives you don't want to see. But that's negative. What's positive is you can buy stuff on Amazon and help out the show. But you got to go through mikesdailypodcast.com. Go through that link that you see there on the page. And there's also the PayPal. If you'd like to support the show, you'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. There's also the wonderful uh, links. Links to all the places you can catch this show and you can comment on this show at different places on social media find all those links at mikesdailypodcast.com and now the segment that we like to call news random news random so we've been hearing so much about emails that hillary 
may or may not have deleted. By the way, Stephen Baldwin is not impressed by his brother Alex impersonation of Donald Trump, which is fantastic. But Stephen Baldwin is a born again Christian and apparently uh, doesn't uh, approve of anything that would support a candidate that's against God by making fun of Trump being pro Hillary. You know, he has done a lot of what it would be called faith based movies and TV shows. Even though back in the day, didn't he do that movie where. He seduces a lesbian or something. There was like a was a three of hearts. Stephen Baldwin. What an interesting individual. Over the course of decades, though, Donald Trump's companies have systematically destroyed or hidden thousands of emails, digital records, and paper documents demanded in official proceedings, often in defiance of court orders. This, uh, according to Newsweek, it used to be a magazine. Now it's just online. These tactics, exposed by a Newsweek review of thousands of pages of court filings, judicial orders, and affidavits from an array of court cases, have enraged judges, prosecutors, opposing lawyers, and the many ordinary citizens entangled in litigation with Donald Trump. In each instance, Donald and entities he controlled also erected numerous hurdles that made lawsuits drag on for years, forcing courtroom opponents to spend huge sums of money and legal fees as they struggled sometimes in vain to obtain records I love people like that oh aren't they wonderful people like that and the what the people that run the Scientologists and all that love the little love the litigation this behavior is a particular import given Trump's frequent condemnations of Hillary Clinton for having deleted more than 30,000 emails from a server she used during her time as Secretary of State. While Clinton and her lawyers have said all those emails were personal, Trump has suggested repeatedly on the campaign trail that they were government documents Clinton was trying to hide and they destroy that destroying them constituted a crime. The allegation, which the FBI concludes was not supported by any evidence, is a crowd pleaser for Donald Trump. He uses it all the time. Because you'd be in jail. And he says stuff uh, like that at his rallies, and he's greeted by supporters where they are chanting, lock her up. Trump's use of deception and untruthful affidavits, as well as the hiding or improper destruction of documents, dates back to at least 1973, when the Republican nominee, his father, and their real estate company battled the federal government over civil charges that they refused to rent apartments to African Americans. The Trump strategy was simple, deny, impede, and delay while destroying documents the court had ordered them to hand over. Shortly after the government filed its case in October, Trump attacked. He falsely declared to reporters that the feds had no evidence he and his father discriminated against minorities, but instead were attempting to force them to lease to welfare recipients who couldn't pay their rent. The family's attempts to slow down the federal case were at times nonsensical. Trump submitted an affidavit contending that the government had engaged in some unspecified wrongdoing by releasing statements to the press on the day it brought the case without first having any, quote, formal communications with him. He contended that he learned of the complaint only while listening to his car radio that morning. But Trump's sworn statement was a lie. Court records show that the government had filed its complaint at 10 a.m. and phoned him almost immediately afterward. The government later notified the media with a press release. Prosecutors responded to Trump's affidavit by showing he had fudged his claim by using the term formal communication. An acknowledgement they said that he had received what only he would characterize as informal notification which they described as an intentional effort to mislead the court and the public, but the allegation showed the case. It required government lawyers to appear in court to shoot down Trump's false charge. And then he had more delaying tactics. You know, there's more about this in the story that is on MSN and through Newsweek. And it goes on quite a bit. I won't quote it all here. But it just goes to show that he is quite the hypocrite when he is yelling about... Uh, Hillary and 
such. As we go outside a cafe, anyway, we're bringing you Mike's Deli podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. A recent poll has been showing uh, that there are people that are interested in this Hillary case, that the, the new uh, Comey letter going to Congress, talking about it. Others are like, no, it's done. I've made my choice. Stop giving me all these revelations all the time. I've made my decision. I'm not going to change. Let's just get this election over with. I would agree with that. Next show is going to be the wonderful Madame Rutabaga Valentina Vice and Bentley. Enjoy your tequila root beer. Enjoy your pizza. Enjoy the candy. Enjoy the candy wrappers all over the ground. Everywhere you go now, there's candy wrappers and occasionally a dismembered pumpkin. Ah, uh, thank you. November 1st. Oh, happy uh, Dia de los Muertos. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.